Today in our 2017 Forest River Sunseeker on the Ford E450 chassis, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the Roadmaster rear anti-sway bar. Part number is RM-1139-147. Now here's our Roadmaster sway bar once we have it installed. Now this sway bar is going to do a much better job than our factory sway bar at preventing that side-to-side -side body roll. That's something that's typically going to happen if you're in severe crosswinds, passing an 18-wheeler, uneven road surfaces can kind of cause the RV to lean a little bit side to side. And ultimately that leads to you having to put more input into the steering to keep it tracking straight down the road. When we put on an upgrade this substantial, you're going to have a noticeable difference in the way your RV handles. So as you're cornering through mountain roads and stuff like that, your RV will stay a lot more level but also just in your normal kind of like straight uh, highway style driving, a lot less driver input going in there. You're gonna reduce the driver fatigue. And you won't have to fight your steering wheel so much to keep going in a straight line. Now here's a good look at the difference you're gonna have between the Roadmaster sway bar and your factory sway bar. The diameter of the factory sway bar here is about an inch and an eighth, where with the Roadmaster we're going up to an inch and a half. So it's going to give us much more of the sway fighting effect. The Roadmaster is a 4140 chrome molly material, which is going to be a higher grade material also than what our stock setup comes with. We're also going to pick up a big advantage in our mounting hardware, where the stock sway bar is going to come with a rubber bushing. The Roadmaster sway bar has a polyurethane bushing. Now these bushings are designed to last much longer than a standard rubber bushing you don't get the whole enlargement that we typically do as these work. Those rubbers tend to kind of open up. And these also stand up to the elements quite well. You're not going to have to worry about the oils, salts, and things like that on the road. You'll also see a big difference in our end links. Our hardware is going to be slightly larger. And instead of the rubber bushings in those, we're also going to have the polyurethane here. It's just going to be a much stiffer, more heavy-duty setup. It's going to allow more transfer of that sway bar side to side and give us the desired effect. The installation process is also pretty easy in this setup. For the attachment points at our axle here on each side, we're just going to use factory hardware in the factory location, just putting on our upgraded parts here. The end links, the only hole we need to drill is one on each side, and that's at the upper connection point there. Now to begin our installation, we need to get the old sway bar out of the way. It's attached to the frame at the end here where the end links go up. On the inside of the frame there's a nut that's got a kind of like a little flange on it that holds it in place. That bolt passes through and the outside you'll need a 15 millimeter socket to remove it. It's going to be located right here. You can see the end link comes up from the sway bar. Now we'll remove the one here on the passenger side as well. It's in the exact same location. Now you just want to pull down on that sway bar. Then we'll wiggle that nut and pull downward. And we can pull that flange out and we'll get this off of our frame rail. Now we'll follow that sway bar back. We're going to have the brackets that attach it to the bottom of the axle here. Got a bolt on the front and the back. I'm going to get those removed, but the first one I take out, I always thread back in a little bit so it'll support it. We'll get all of our bolts backed out and we'll use those to hold it while we take them out and pull it down. We're going to hang on to all four of our bolts as well. Now while supporting the sway bar, you want to pull out your bolts that you left in to hold it. And we'll set it aside. Now included with our sway bar, we're going to have a cup of lubricant. This is for the inside of our bushing here. The polyurethane has great advantages over rubber bushings, but if moisture gets inside here, it can cause squeaking. So this is going to eliminate that. I'm going to get a good amount and spread it evenly all the way around the inside edge. Now with both of our bushings, Lubricated properly, we'll want to fit these around the sway bar. We're going to go in that short flat spot on each side. Then we can slide the 
clamps around it. Now we'll get our sway bar lifted up in position. It might be a good idea to get yourself an extra set of hands. And we're gonna reuse our factory bolts, but we will be adding the smaller of the flat washers onto them. You can see just like that. Those will go right back in the original location. Now we'll take just a second. We wanna center up the bar, so I tend to look where this corner is over to the saddle brackets. Just make sure that's equal and we'll snug down those bolts. Now we'll torque each of those down to the specifications and the instructions. Now we can attach our end links to the sway bar. We wanna use one of the larger washers on the bolt side. That's gonna go through the end link. The end link will go through the sway bar and then we're gonna add on one of our smaller washers and a lock nut. We're gonna do that on both sides. Now we'll move on to getting the holes drilled for our end links. To find that location, we want to adjust our end link here so it's straight up and down, just like that. That point, I'm gonna mark the frame. And from that point, I'm gonna measure up four and a half inches. And at that intersection, that'll be where we'll drill our 17 30 seconds hole and we'll want to do that on both sides of the vehicle. Now as I drill these out, I like to start with a smaller bit and get a pilot hole created, and then we can work our way up. Now we'll continue to step our bits up until we get to the appropriate size. With our holes drilled out, we're gonna rotate our end link up. We're gonna place our bolt through. Again, we're gonna have a, just a regular hex bolt with the larger washer on it. Bring that up and through. Then inside, we're gonna place on a smaller washer and our nut. We'll go do that on the passenger side as well. Now we'll snug down our end link bolts and torque them to the specifications you'll find in the instructions. To do this, you'll want a 19 millimeter wrench and socket. That's going to complete our installation of the Roadmaster rear anti-sway bar, part number RM-1139-147, on our 2017 Forest River Sunseeker on the E450 chassis.